happy. Used to hear that song every Friday morning on the radio. And the strange things, it, it, it would bring peace that the work week is just about over, had the weekend ahead of us. Yeah, but reality is, is that there's only one that can back up that. Don't worry, be happy, and that's God. And the beauty of what we see over and over in Scripture that he's calling, trust me, don't worry, I've got this. Don't worry, I've got this. So whatever worries and concerns that you have this morning, um, we want to give it to the Lord. So let me just pray for both of us, all of us today. Father, we just praise your name and we thank you that you've got this and that you do want us to not worry. And you do want us to be happy in Jesus, as the song goes. So, Father, I thank you and help us in this next step of our journey. We praise your name. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I looked up several passages in the Bible in the Old Testament that um, backed up this don't worry, be happy um, theme. And uh, in Hosea chapter 11, just parts of uh, verse 1 through 4, it is he, I, it is I who taught Ephraim to walk. Isn't that a cool picture? I took them in my arms, but they did not know that it was I that healed them. Hmm. Led them with cords of a band, of bonds of love, and I became to them as one who lifts the yoke from their jaws. I bent down and fed them. Okay, don't worry, be happy. Deuteronomy chapter 1, parts of 30 and 31. You saw how the Lord your God carried you, just as a man carries his son, in all the way in which you have walked. Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord appeared to him from afar, saying, I've loved you with everlasting love, therefore I've drawn you with loving kindness. And the last one I have is Psalm 107, 19 and 20. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness. Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry, be happy. If you've been with us, uh, we've been in Exodus looking at this great deliverance that God did for his people. Set them free out of years. They were crying out um, for deliverance from slavery in Egypt. And the Lord responded in his great signs and wonders and using Moses to lead. And so they've been set free. And, and here's the beauty of this whole picture that relates to you and me is that he set them free, he delivered them to live a different life, a new life, a life with him, a life trusting him, set free to begin what I call basic training to learn how to depend on God. And in that, this whole new thoughts, uh, new thoughts, new motives, new attitudes, new purpose, this life that God has planned for us to live with him. And of course, that relates directly to you and me. If you have been born again, then God has given you a new life to live. And it's it's upside down compared to this world with new thoughts and new motives, new attitudes, new purpose and new life to live different than what you've known before, different than the world's way of living, God's way of living that he has caused you, and I think about when I became born again, that he caused me to become born again, that he started me on this journey to, to depend on him, to learn this new way of living. Acts 16, 31 says, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Saved for eternity, saved for all eternity because of what Jesus, God the Son, came down from heaven, died on the cross, rose again, the promise of eternal life and the promise of his spirit to live this eternal life here and now for, for all eternity. Um, we have then seen this training in Exodus chapter 15. In this training, God begins with just the fundamentals of life, water and food. And uh, 
teaching them that he's going to supply, that he is the one that gives this. So they're three days out and they're, they're thirsty. They think they're going to die. And God provides in a miraculous way. And even after that, he gives them a time of refreshing in Elim, uh, chapter 15 of Exodus 27, where there were 12 springs of water and 70 date palm trees and they camped there beside the water. So a refreshing time. So here's this Lord bringing them back, training them. And it sounds pretty severe, training them even for water and refreshing them. And then in the second lesson that he's teaching them to, to depend on him is that he will supply all their food. That he's asked them, though, to participate by going picking up the food. And there were two, do you remember this from last week? Two, um, two specifics that they were supposed to do. One is that they were only to gather for one day. Don't gather extra, don't store it up, or it's going to go bad. And some of them found out it went bad. And then he said, but on the sixth day, that day only gather enough for two days and so far we're going to look at why and that's what they begin to ask why are we doing this so they they did gather and they come and they say they say why why do we do this so here the, these uh training them to trust them now in the middle of that they were grumbling and complaining that they they, they were afraid they were afraid that they were going to die <laughs> They were afraid they were going to die. Not a laughing matter, but God would provide in such a way that they didn't have to grumble and complain. So, last week I asked you for the second week to join me in making um, a commitment not to grumble uh, for another week. No grumbling. No, no, no. Not one. And, um, and part of that, the reason for the application, no, I guess the whole reason for that application is that we found out in looking into scripture that grumbling actually is a sin because it's a it's a response of not trusting that God's going to help that situation that he's not going to provide. And so I was looking at that in my own life going, man, I just I just grumble about a lot of things. And so I've been in sin and I really didn't know it. And I knew it, but it's like, you know, everybody does it. It's a human nature. But no. This is a holy nature. To stop doing this is a, is walking in the Spirit, really. So there's a big distinction between the old way and the new way in this life is by not grumbling and complaining, but trusting in the Lord. Okay, so I asked you to do that. I also asked if you would meditate and read on um, John chapter um, 4 through 6. And in that, Jesus would echo that he is the the water that springs up to eternal life. In chapter four and chapter six, he says, I am the bread of life, the bread that comes down from heaven, whoever believes in me. Um, let me read that for you, because I had it memorized. Whoever, um, let's see, I'm in Acts, John chapter six, maybe you're going there too. Huh? Verse 35, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. No, he's talking about God supplying spiritually as well as physically. And that, and this is the one, this is God providing for us. Okay, so we brought that home with application. And then um, today, so turn to chapter 16 of, of Exodus, and we're gonna pick up at 22 and 23. And what we're gonna see then is, um, we're going to see that uh, Moses explains the answer to why they gathered um, twice as much on the sixth day. Verse 22. Now it came about on the sixth day. They gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, then he said to them, this is what the Lord meant. Tomorrow is a Sabbath observance a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake, boil what you will boil, and all that is left over put aside to be kept until morning. Okay, so the reason was this was the Lord's day, a Sabbath. So what the Sabbath means then is cease from work, to, to stop. 
And so as we look at this, that God is, this is his third lesson that he's teaching them about um, depending on him in this. He's saying, just stop. Stop from gathering. Stop from getting what you need for food. I'm going to help you to provide for that second day, but just stop. And really thinking about it, too, that when they were slaves in Egypt, they didn't stop. There was no ceasing to the work. They were slaves to every single day. So God, in his loving plan, this third lesson is, would you just take a break? <laughs> so I call it taking a break with Jesus. You know, just stop. Now, what is work? Well, work, if you boil it all down, is it's to, to make money to provide for ourselves, to provide food and clothes. And, of course, um, more than that, um, we can have vacations and, and some fun sort of thing, games and, and all that. Um, one more thought that I had as we as just kind of putting this together is um, God, in his sovereignty and in his plan of life, he has made cycles. Have you noticed that? Cycles in life. The seasons in life, there's cycles. There's cycles for plants, life, plant, animals. We are ha living in cycles. Well, I'm just looking at some of the plants. I remember when I first realized that there were plants that during the day they would be just open and happy. And then at night, some of these flowers would just kind of go to sleep for the night. That was the coolest thing when I first saw that. In the morning, they just kind of wake up like you and me and just looking for the sun. I had to get a, a sunflower plant, sunflower seed plant, and watch it because I had been told it turns to the sun. And sure enough, as I watched that, it would, yeah, it looked to the sun. And isn't that a great application? Look to the sun, look to the Son of God. That he supplies. So, in in just looking at this, what is the Sabbath? It's cease from work, so it's it's rest. And so God has ordained and planned that our our body and our spirit. So, two reasons. One is that we need to rest. That God has put in plan that this body and and spirit needs to rest. And then He's saying on this day. Um, I want you to honor me. This is my day. Trust me with this. <laughs> Depend on me this day. Honor me this day. And that's why I call it, you know, take a break with Jesus. As I think about more than just work, I think about worry and concern, like when we started, and just saying, don't worry, be happy. That even on not just one day out of the week, but God wants us to rest in Him, to, to take a break. But, you know, maybe today you and I, um, for this day, Sunday that we're taking our, our rest, our Sabbath rest, that we would take a break from worry. That God, God has given permission for you to take a break from worry. Just give it to the Lord. This, why don't we do that together today? Just. Let's just take a break from it today and just let it go. And maybe that'll become every day. But isn't it a beautiful thing that in God's plan, this lesson number three is, would you just give it a break today? Honor me today. You need it, and I want you to turn to me because I'm the one that supplies all life. This is what God is saying, you know. So um, in verse 24, through 29, it gives the result of this instruction, how they did during this instruction. So let's watch this, verse 24. Um, so they put it aside until morning, and Moses ordered, and uh, it did not become foul, nor was there any worm in it like they experienced before. Uh, verse 25, and Moses says, Eat it today, for today is the Sabbath unto the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you will gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Oh, it came about on the seventh day. <laughs> Some of the people wanted to find out, and they went out to gather, but they found none. Then the Lord, a little bit upset, said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my instructions? 
see, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he gives you bread for two days. On the sixth day, remain every man in his place. Let no one go out um, of his place on the seventh day. Verse 30, so the people rested on the seventh day, giving them permission to take a break. Isn't that a loving God instead of a harsh taskmaster, giving them a break? Time to be refreshed. Um, so thinking of some verses now, how do we apply this? Well, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, 33 um, talks about seeking the Lord first. Matthew 6, 33. Verse 31, do not be anxious then, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or with what shall we clothe ourselves? For these things the Gentiles eagerly seek. For your heavenly Father knows what you need, that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore do not be anxious for tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough. Tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough of its own. Hmm. Okay, so how do we, how do we apply this truth of this rest that we're seeing that God is, has given the people permission to do that for us is that we seek him first and we find that peace and that rest in that. And of course, you know, Philippians 4 to in Matthew, turn to Philippians chapter 4. In Philippians chapter 4, um, Paul will... Um, will pen this, a man that knows what it is to walk with the Lord, knows his reason for life. It says in verse 4, rejoice, uh, verse, chapter 4, verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, God, your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Okay. So as they were given this day to rest, um, to honor the Lord with um, that Jesus is our Sabbath rest. Jesus himself will say, um, check this out in Mark chapter 2, verse 22, uh, 27. Jesus says, um, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Um, so I'm getting there, like you getting there with this one. Consequently, verse 28, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. It's Jesus. Take a break with Jesus. Permission to take a break with Jesus. Permission to walk with Jesus. Um, I, in closing, the passage in Matthew chapter um, chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, beginning in verse 28. So talking about this rest in the Lord. It's, there's more than just a day. There's this rest in the one that created us, and he's got this, and he can say, don't worry, be happy. Um, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take your yoke upon me, take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my load is light. Is that amazing? That God wanted you and me to be reminded that he is the one that can say, don't worry, be happy. Give it to me. Take a break from the worry and give it to him. Take that break. Now, as this chapter ends up here, um, the Lord speaks to Moses and Moses to Aaron about making um, a memorial 
so they remember what the Lord has done. And so they um, put the manna in, in jars and they save it. And it says in verse 35 of Exodus 16, the sons of Israel ate the manna for 40 years <laughs> until they came to the inhabited land. They ate the manna when they came to the border of the land of Canaan, the, the promised land. Isn't that amazing to see this picture of God providing all these years for them and that God has the best for you and for me. And the best is that we cast off the worry and the anxiety, give it to him, rest in him. And let me just thank the Lord. Father, we just bless your name. We thank you that you are the one that says, don't worry. Be happy in me. Thank you, Lord, for training your people that in your word we get to see people what they did wrong and what they did right. And it's for our instruction that we would learn to follow you. So thank you, Lord God. Lord, would you um, help us to stay, to walk with you. Praise your name, Jesus. Amen. So um, application for the week, would you take that rest time with Jesus and jot down a list of the times God has provided for you. And some of you, you, you could go on forever, but just jot down some of those that God provides to you, that brings to mind an answered prayer. And be ready to share that with people in your life, even this week. And even come next week to share with people here, okay? Now, as I close, as usual, I say to the young people, I'll say to you, remember, God loves you and so do I.